Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Warriors Walk Off here on HBC TV 25. I'm Justin Barrientos. Thank you for joining us today. We'll start with baseball. Head coach Kyle Polk, and yep. uh, you know, I don't know uh, about this weather that we're having this year. And, and uh, as we said off camera, we've been saying that for the past three, four, yeah. or five years, something like that. Last week we didn't have much to talk about because you had to go all the way up to Crookston, and didn't, didn't get to play. Yep. And then uh, this week um, you had rain to deal with, and who knows what we're going to yeah, get. Yeah, we were this actually. Next week. Yeah, we were actually supposed to go to Duluth, and because uh, of temperatures and what they were going to get, they switched to come here, which thanked them for. So we got games in. Uh, yeah, uh, I just I really think Mother Nature is not a baseball fan, the way it seems here the last couple of years. But uh, we're doing our best to uh, try to get games in whenever we can, and uh, try to stay sharp and see what happens. You know, we had Patrick Riley on the show last week to tell us a, a little bit about how things went against Crookston, but from your perspective, since you were one of the ones that had to make the call, going all the way up to Crookston, weather conditions weren't great, field conditions weren't great, what were some of the factors that led to not playing against Crookston? Well, number one, we have a bylaw in our conference handbook for baseball that says that uh, the real field does not get above 32, you do not have to play. Mm -hmm. There is an exception that says if both coaches mutually agree, but I've had guys, we've played in situations like that in the past before we had that bylaw, and uh, I've, my players basically told me don't do it. You know, mm -hmm. They play baseball because of the love of the game, it's fun, and those guys told me those were the worst scenarios, it wasn't even fun to play, so hey, when my players tell me that, I'm going to back my players every time on that situation, so if, until they change the bylaw, that's, mm -hmm. it's there. And there can even be equipment problems of playing in, in cold weather. Right? Yeah, yeah, bats don't last real, <laughs> yeah. well, real well in that situation. So, And the funny thing is most of the bat companies tell you not to use them mm -hmm. under 60 degrees while well, they sell them like to us like hotcakes, so, and knowing that we're going to play in under 60 degrees. But, right. uh, but they do have warranties on them, so basically they'll, they'll replace them for us. Okay. Uh, let's actually talk about some of the games that you had. We'll go back to Wednesday and uh, Bemidji State and, and talk about those games. Uh, Two games, 22 hits, uh, he came away with a pair of wins there. Yes, Bemidji is a team that typically is very, very scrappy and, and uh, they'll put the bat on the ball and do things. Uh, the, their biggest thing is this pitching. They don't always have a whole lot of pitching depth, but uh, we pitch very well. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we hit the ball, got the key hits when we needed to, but we pitched Dylan Whitaker and uh, Aaron Mutter had two outstanding starts for us and then our bullpen came and finished both games. All right, and you know we've talked about that over the past couple of weeks, but uh, the the strength of your bullpen is really amazing this year. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty strong. We've we've had a hiccup or two here and there, but it's overall it's been pretty good. And again, what you mentioned, the three main guys are Parker Holmes from Jacob Watska and Nick Harold on the back end, who's I'm a Brewers fan. He kind of reminded me of Josh Hader now, so <laughs> except he's a righty and Hader's a lefty. Yeah, but still a pretty good comparison. Yeah. I like yep. that. Uh, you had uh, um, uh, Chad Herbst. Uh, and Derek Martin, uh, four for eight at the plate. Um, so just, I mean, great uh, production all around from your guys. Yeah, and it's uh, what we've been early in the year and stuff, we were getting uh, production up and down the line. If it wasn't just one guy all the time uh, that we could always count on, but the guys producing, getting the key hits when we needed, and, uh, and it's, so it's been good. Let's talk about the uh, games this weekend then, uh, Minnesota Duluth, and like you said, you're, you're at home for, for these games. And uh, you had to kind of battle the conditions a little bit. Uh, Duluth uh, won eight to one, and then you came back to win twelve to six in the second game. Uh, talk about that first series of games on Saturday. Well, their pitcher did a good job. They're a left-handed pitcher, uh, actually a guy that we looked at, tried to. We had, I think, we had him on camps and everything. But he did a very good job, kept our hitters off balance. And this was a day when we just didn't get going that first game. We mm -hmm. couldn't get anything together, couldn't put back-to-back -to -back hits together, and give him credit. The guy did a great job. Mm -hmm. And then just the resiliency of your team, that's kind of been one of the things we talked about all season long. Yeah. You t take a loss, but then you bounce back and, and yeah. play well in the second game. Yeah, in the second game, yeah, we did a very good job. We had uh, Kyle Gendron, the freshman pitcher, mm -hmm. did a great job for us in that game, and our hitters did the job in that one. They, they hit the ball and again, all the way up and down the lineup, uh, got some key hits when we needed. Uh, they booted some balls a little bit there, but we capitalize on those, and that's the biggest thing. When teams make mistakes and make errors, you want to make sure you capitalize on it and get, put a couple numbers on the board at that point. All right, and then we'll move on to Sunday and the games against Minnesota Duluth, and I hate to keep going with the same thing, but, but weather. I, this was a three-hour rain delay yeah. that you had to sit through. Yeah. Walk us through that and, and the well, decisions there. Yeah, well, when we talked on Saturday about it, we, we had the noon start because Duluth was had to, has to travel home, and I, they're actually getting on the bus at 2 o'clock today to go to Sioux Falls and stuff, so we want to try to get as 
early enough so they could get back and whatever. But uh, seven o'clock, I woke up, looked at the radar, and looked at the hourly. Looked like we we're going to be able to go at noon, and then it got to be. We took BP at ten, and then at ten forty, the was supposed to take batting practice. Well, then it started raining, mm -hmm. and it just it came out of nowhere because the radar kept showing stuff kind of missing us. Uh, but it happened, so then we delayed it till one o'clock, and then at that point we thought, well, now we might as well just go to three o'clock because it was going to rain basically till two. If you can trust the radar, which it did at that time, but I said we needed about an hour to get the tarp off the field, get the, there's some wet spots, so we went at three o'clock. And I'll give them credit, their coach, Coach Rents, he was said, hey, we're here to play the game, so we're going to play them. You know, everything else is fine. The weather was fine. The temperature's fine. It was just making sure that the field we get, that quit raining and stuff. And then we did play in some light sprinkles mm -hmm. and stuff the rest of it, but it was nothing because our field is so dry right now anyway. It needs it needed moisture. Yeah. So but so that little bit of rain during the game didn't hurt it at all. all right, we'll probably get plenty of that later yeah. on this week. Yeah. But I, I want to kind of talk about the, the situations because the, the same thing with Crookston and here, you know, you're, you're kind of ready to play and then you have to have a delay. So what does that do to the pitchers? What does that do to the rest of the team where things are kind of pushed back a little bit? What, what do they do? Well, it, hopefully you, you let them know early enough that the pitchers can readjust their start time and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we generally don't want our pitchers warm up until we know we're going to play. And that was one thing that Coach Rance said too. We don't want to start a guy up and then have to stop and then start or whatever. And I said, okay, that's fine. So then we, that's why we picked at three o'clock. But again, with our situation here, as opposed to being at Crookston, you know, once we knew it was done raining, the temperatures and everything were going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, what we, when we had to make the decision at Crookston at 11:30 in the morning, at that point when we checked the weather, there was no chance of we were going to get above the real field. Now I guess later in the afternoon, like five or six o'clock, it did well. We have to make a decision at yeah. one time, or whatever. So. Uh, so I guess that's all that goes into the playing in the outdoor sports. <laughs> yeah, right. So. And then uh, this week, as you said, uh, you're going to be hopping a bus as soon as you're out of here. Yep. And then later on in the week, we don't know exactly what's going to happen yeah. with, with the weather. So how do you approach this? Yeah, week? so this, this was a late decision on this to go to Bismarck because we're supposed to play there Wednesday. Well, when their coach called me Saturday night, he said they're forecasted to get a bunch of snow. And... Uh, then we touched base yesterday during the middle of our games. I was able to talk to him, and there's still the snow chance went down, but the temperatures is going to be cold and windy. Mm -hmm. So they said their best bet to play would be on Tuesday there. So I said, all right. Well, we started the process actually during the middle of the game, the second game yesterday. I'm on the, trying to get a hold of the bus company, and Coach Riley's trying to get a hold of the hotel, and we're trying to get things done when we're out in the field and uh, trying to get that. So, so we're squared away to leave at noon today and play tomorrow there and then get back and then, then we'll probably sit inside a couple of days and watch it snow. Yeah. Well, good luck with all of that. Yes. <laughs> We're going to take a break here on Warriors Walk Off. When we come back, Tanner Williams will join us right after this. Warriors Walk Off on HBC TV 25 is brought to you by the WA Group. Business Internet just reached the tipping point. Tip your hat to the information age. Get a gig for business and upload robust files, complex videos, and compound reports at the same time in real time while saving time for DISA and data. Get a gig. Got it? Now get going. Get up to one gig internet or upgrade to a Gigabiz Choice bundle with telephone to save even more. Call 888-474-9995 to get started today. Your community matters. So does making sure it's well protected. Because Sally's isn't just a cafe. And Smith's isn't just a flower shop. It's years of hard work and investment. Hey, new equipment looks great. And in this moment, you realize your independent auto owner's insurance agent is the right person to protect it. Auto owner's insurance. WA Group in Winona is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. And welcome back to Warriors Walk Off. Tanner Williams now joins us. And uh, let's go backwards for you. Uh, find out a little bit about you from your high school days. So you went to Arrowhead High School. Yes, sir. Uh, played uh, baseball there and uh, had a lot of success getting to state. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to dig up too many bad yeah. memories, but uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about uh, the road to state for you. Um, so the road for state, we, like you said, we made it to state a lot, um, but we just didn't have as much success in the playoffs. But uh, during the season, we were just a really nitty gritty team, very small ball. We wanted to produce a lot of runs and we just had a great pitching my junior year. We had a lot of D1 stars and it was just fun to learn from them. All right, and you were actually named uh, second team All-State 
your senior year mm -hmm. at Arrowhead High School, and you were named to one of the all-star teams, and you play the game, the all-star game? I did, yep. What was that like? Oh, that was a lot of fun, getting to like uh, meet all the people in the state that are the best players in the state. Uh, it's fun to see like how the, where they're going, like what level they're at, mm -hmm. and it makes you want to become a better player. So it was just a good time. So you were uh, the fourth hitter or the third hitter, one of the two, and then your teammate went to Indiana, correct? Yes, yeah. So Jeff Foltz, he went to Indiana. He's there right now. Uh, he's a year younger than me. He's a freshman. And I was the four hitter while he was a three hitter, and I learned a lot from watching him. So even though he was younger than me, I never. I was always humbled. I wanted to learn from him. Okay. And uh, what was the decision to come here to Winona State? What kind of sealed the deal for you? Well, when I first came here, I just fell in love with the campus. I fell in love with the coaching staff, Coach Poe, Coach Riley, um, and I just loved it. I couldn't, nothing else beat it from all the other colleges that I visited. Okay. So. And what was the, the thing that you saw from Tanner that you wanted well, in here? Well, a very, very successful high school career, mm -hmm. but the biggest thing that caught our eye was the athleticism, uh, being a shortstop, but with the athletic ability, we knew, because we brought in, actually three of our guys were all state that year. Uh, Zach Stang from Eau Claire and then Logan Grunhall who's not with us anymore but so I had those three guys I had the three best shortstops in Wisconsin coming here with knowing that his versatility is probably whether he plays because we had Derek Martin mm -hmm. there but his versatility could play second play short play third have to play first base if we need him plus with the athleticism if we need him in the outfield so that was the biggest thing with him is the ability to play everywhere I think is what really sealed the deal that we wanted to make sure we get him on campus. All right, let's talk about playing everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, Twins fans know Will and Zostadio, mm -hmm. who's uh, really come on this season and play everywhere. What's the kind of mindset to be able to switch about infield, outfield, wherever you need to play? I think it's just having fun with the game. Um, I remember just taking fly balls um, in summer league when uh, I used to pitch as well. And after I would pitch, they'd put me in the outfield, and I just had a blast going down, chasing down balls, just a kid having fun. And then also in the infield, it's just when you first play a position, you don't want to be stuck to that position. You want to just see what every perspective is like. So. Okay. Well, while that versatility got you in the lineup your freshman year, 38 games, 34 starts, ended up adding 330. Um, for you, what made that transition from high school to college easy and, and to have that success your, your freshman year? I think it was just trusting myself. Um, don't try to do too much. Coach Polk tells me that all the time. If I try to do too much, usually nothing, it doesn't go well. Um, trust your hands and then just see ball, hit ball. If you see fastball, sit on that pitch, find your pitch, and then get it, hit, rip it when you get the chance. All right, and that's carried over into this year as well. No sophomore slump for you. You're 343 average, second on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you do this off season to get ready for this year to continue your success? Um, I'd say I put on a little weight. I was definitely a little scrawny little kid coming in, put on about 10 pounds over the summer. Uh, that's helped me increase my exit velocity, which like normal routine balls, that'd be just liner, like soft liners, are now doubles, which are which helps a lot in the slugging percentage. So. And you're also leading the team in home runs, mm -hmm. too. Four home runs. The rest of the team has three. Was, is, is that the bulking up that, that kind yeah, of power? Yeah, I, definitely. I remember my first time taking BP in the fall here uh, on the field. I remember just trying to take a normal, just regular swing, and the ball just was flying off the bat. So it was fun to see that happen. And I guess you'd be happy with that yeah. uh, as well, yep. that production. Yep. Exactly. Is that really important to have players you know, bulk up after their freshman well, year? Well, even... yes, but it's it's generally just a normal thing. They mature and they finally fill their body out. And that's what I always tell people that uh, we don't do a whole lot. We, we have a very good strength program, mm -hmm. but we also take into consideration that we're gonna, the guys are gonna get to college, they're gonna finally mature, they're gonna fill out, they're gonna become a little bit stronger. We talk about pitchers. Uh, our program is good to maintain, but a lot of times the pitchers coming in, they'll gain two, three miles an hour just because they fill out and mature sure. and stuff. And hitters, they come just become a little bit stronger and they'll see the ball jump off the bat a little bit more. And then the other things we do will help increase that. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. And I hope you get to play this week. Yes, sir. All right, uh, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Walk Off. And when we come back, we'll talk softball with head coach Greg Jones. That's right after this. Warriors Walk Off on HBC TV 25 is brought to you by the WA Group. What's a Southern girl? It's waking up before the sun rises. It's loving the simple things in life like the dirt roads that lead you home. It's working hard to get what you want. It's hanging your own stands, breaking your own ground, and strategizing every little move for that one moment when everything you've worked for is standing right in front of you. Even if I fail a million times, I keep pushing myself till I'm exhausted, 
filthy and about to give up. And that's when the adrenaline hits. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. WA Group in Winona is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. And welcome back to Warriors Walk Off on HBC TV 25. Time now to talk softball with head coach Greg Jones. And, uh, well, another week, another six wins for you, right? Yeah, well, I guess we'll take them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you had uh, three series. We'll start with uh, Wednesday, Minnesota State Mankato. And, uh, again, your power continued. Mm -hmm. uh, you asked for it a couple of weeks ago yeah. on the show, and you've gotten it. Yeah, and, and you know, winning two at Mankato doesn't happen very often. Right. Uh, it's a pretty good pretty good rivalry over the years and pretty good matchup over the years and and uh, knowing we had to go to their place is always a challenge and so I thought the kids played really well and, and again Al got that big home run in the second game at um, their kid I think had eight strikeouts through the first four innings and uh, the first two kids got out there in the fifth and then Laney got a two strike hit on the next pitch Al hit one, hit, hits one out of the ballpark and it didn't you know, two swings of the bat, all of a sudden we were up three to one and made it hold, which was great. Yeah, and then uh, the pitching again uh, was great. Uh, your your one-two punch has really come through the season and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of been the way that it's been all year. Yeah, it has. And, and you know, coming in, we knew what we had with Joe mm -hmm. um, or what we thought we were going to have with Joe. And then it was just kind of going to see what happened in game two. And they've really established themselves now. With, you know, Liz's ERA continues to drop and, yeah. and uh, uh, she doesn't give up a lot of runs. And, and uh, just what that does does with both of them it, it allows us to go into a game knowing we have an opportunity obviously you don't know you're going to win but it gives you a chance if you're not going to give up many runs to be able to win a game you talked about the known and, and Liz has kind of been an unknown but mm -hmm. as you said she leads the NSIC in ERA 0.59 mm -hmm. yeah. which is incredible does anything really surprise you at this point well, I think everything surprises me every day <laughs> I, I you never know what we're going to get out of our kids every day that's just the way the game is the game is so hard and and uh, the, and the, the league is so talented and um, you know, we won a game the other day, and I just said, you know, against Southwest on, on Friday, and, you know, we ate run them, and I didn't know what we were going to do in game two. And <laughs> you, you just never know what kind of performance you're going to get because of the other team, and, and you just hope that you do the best you can. And, and uh, Liz has continued to just put up numbers, and, and uh, um, you know, her ability to change speeds has really been amazing, yeah. and uh, her, her changeup is so good, and um, and her ability to throw that changeup at multiple times in an account or in anywhere in an at bat has been such a great equalizer for us. And was that the pitch that she said she just developed? Uh, her curveball curve is the ball. one okay. that she did, but now being able to use off of that, you know, because her curveball she throws so hard, she's a power arm. Mm -hmm. And anytime you have that kind of tempo and that kind of speed and then can subtract off it like that has been amazing. All right. Uh, just a little bit about uh, Alexis Kelsey uh, mm -hmm. has been a big spark in your offense, too. She's really come on lately. She has. And, and you know, we knew what we had in Lex from a power source. Uh, uh, but she had to sit out all last year, unfortunately, because of the knee injury. She had sat out her 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 year her second year at Northwest Missouri mm -hmm. and then transferred in a year ago and we thought it was going to be a really big impact in the middle of our batting order well then you know re-injured the knee and so sat out for two years well then you start to wonder as a coach okay what are you going to get because the kids missed two years and where's her timing where's her confidence and right. all that type of thing but in practice every day she's such a great power hitter um, but now she's starting to hit for a higher average as well as the power. She's getting base hits too. She's driving the ball through the middle of the field. She's been able to go the other way. Had a had a hit uh, over the second baseman's head the other day. And and when those things start to come, you start to really become a more complete hitter. It's really important for all of us. And as you said at the beginning of the year, you were looking for more people to step up offensively to, mm -hmm. to get the hits and not have to rely on Allie and and yeah. uh, Laney and, and a couple other players. Mm -hmm. So I mean, how is that going? Besides Alexis, you, you've also had some other players step up. As well. We have, and again, what we always want, what we always talk about internally, is the length of our lineup, mm -hmm. and uh, how, how long can we make that lineup, and and uh, and that's what we've been able to do. Ann's really having a nice mm -hmm. year right now, uh, hitting behind Lex, and it and it, it's two things: one, who feeds into whom, and and how we're feeding each other, um, and and then the ability strategically, as you set that lineup up. 
for what the opposition wants to do and, and who are they trying to avoid. And you know, it was really important for us um, to be able to have somebody after Laney because they can't pitch around Laney. Now they got to start to pick their poison and that lineup gets longer and longer and longer and there's no easy out. And so now they have to challenge all of us. They can't really work around anybody with that length. And Kayla's been able to set the table at the top. Her and Katie at the top of the order have been really instrumental in getting on base. And now seeing the production that, uh, you know, um, Jen and Carly are at the bottom, which again feeds back into the top. And now Riley's gotten going, had a big three hit day the other day. And suddenly it gets really hard for an opponent on who they're going to pitch to when we have that kind of length. It seems like a, a switch was flipped getting into conference play because mm -hmm. uh, you've just been on fire uh, in mm -hmm. conference play. Mm -hmm. What do you see in that? Well, I think it's a couple of things. I think one, it just took time and patience for all of us. I think we all pressed a little bit. We could see early on that we were going to be really good offensively. Mm -hmm. And then the last couple of weeks, right before we started the season in practice, I could start to see it go the other way. And I was getting a little nervous and I think they pressed coming out of the gate. So I think a, a little bit was patience. Um, and, and then the other thing that we really emphasize the last couple of weeks is hitting as a team and hitting collectively and just moving the line and don't feel like you've got to be the one that's the savior here. Just go and have your at bat. That every inning there's three of you that get to hit and if anybody gets on now four of you or five or six and it, and, and it grows that way. And it took the, I, I think, a little bit of the pressure off themselves of pressing that they had to get the hit or they had to pick each other up. It was a, a collection of hitters hitting together that really changed the mindset. And then, as you talked about last week, uh, the power kind of came naturally. Nothing was really forced to get that going. I imagine that's made things a little bit easier as well. It, it has, and I, and I think some of that is when we're hitting better collectively, the pitcher's under duress more. Now you get to see better pitches in your at-bat mm -hmm. because she's on the ropes. When she's sitting back pitching in a rocking chair with nobody on base, three up, three down, three up, three down, you're always having to hit her pitch because she's in control of the at-bats versus you pile pitches on her arm, you put her under duress with runners on base, and she's stressed out, and suddenly that ball starts to spin and not break, we get better pitches to hit out of the ballpark too. Um, and But the idea of power is great because it's hard to hit home runs when you try to hit home runs, but when you get power, you get extra base hits, is instant offense, and you get a hit and a run all at one time, and that's, that's pretty big. All right, we have a little over a minute left in this segment, but coming up now, Augustana leads mm -hmm. off your week. Uh, they're nationally ranked as well, just like you. Uh, talk about this series and, and what that's going to be like. I think it's really important for us to play them just to see who they are. Um, whether they're better than us or we're better than them is really inconsequential. It, it's who's going to execute in that game, and we need that type of game. And uh, against somebody really, really talented. We haven't had, I mean, we've played some really good teams, but mm -hmm. top to bottom, I mean, there's not an out in that lineup. I mean, they're nine hitters hitting 512 right oh. now. And uh, uh, their eight hitter has eight home runs. And, and uh, they're averaging only giving up two runs a game. So we need to play a team like that to see that matchup because that's a postseason matchup. And, and we just need to get into that. Uh, it's always tough in Augie. Um, it's mm -hmm. like going to Mankato. I mean, those are tough matchups. You'd rather have them at home, but it, it's good for us to go on the road and see how we do. All right. Well, good luck with those games coming up Thank here. You. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Walk Off. When we come back, Ali Nowak will join us right after this. Warriors Walk Off on HBC TV 25 is brought to you by the WA Group. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. WA Group in Winona is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Be sure to check out US Golf TV where you are gonna see golf products that you have never seen before. You're also gonna see golf tips from some of the leading instructors around the country that are truly changing the way people are teaching the game and challenging the status quo. Also, you're gonna see fitness tips that are revolutionizing the way PGA Tour pros are training their body and swinging the golf club. If you want something different, if you're looking for some new information, US Golf TV has it. Be sure to check your local listings. US Golf TV, we've got you covered. And welcome back to Warriors Walk Off here on HBC TV 25. Ali Nowak now joins us, and uh, thanks for coming back here. Thanks for having me. Now, you have a Rubik's Cube. You I can do, see that yeah. you, you have that. Now, the last time that you were here, we talked about uh, your high school days, and we talked about you know some of the things you've done here at Winona State. But what I didn't ask, and I think I knew at some point, is you're a big fan of Rubik's Cubes. Yeah, big fan. <laughs> uh, so you've got one here. Uh, you can go ahead and work on that. And okay. tell us a little bit about 
how you first got involved with, with Ruby's Cube? Um, I just had always had one and I didn't know how to solve it. I could just do one side like a lot of people and then I kind of, before I came to college, I was like, okay, I'm gonna you know figure out how to do this. And I learned it and I just really liked it. And so I kept doing it. And now I have like a hundred different ones, wow. so. And what's the craziest one that you have? I saw you have a whole bunch of different ones. Um, I have a couple that are like nine or 10 sided and then I have like 12 faces on some. So those are probably some, but yeah, the blindfolded ones. I have one that's for people that are visually impaired. Mm -hmm. So it's got all different markings on the side. So it's kind of like braille almost, but I can do that one blindfolded. So that might be, might be the winner for craziest. Okay, do you know how long it took you before you solved your first one? Um, I figured it out using YouTube the first day that I like attempted it, so. Oh, wow. but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. what's your personal record with just the standard kind of uh, Rubik's Cube? 25 seconds. 25 seconds. Yeah, on a good day. <laughs> Amazing, and you've kind of gotten your teammates involved in this too. You're kind of converting people into cubers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's caught on with a couple different people and, and knew how to do it a little bit coming in, but then you know, we kind of hit it off doing that and then Jordan, one of my uh, roommates, she does it sometimes. And so, yeah, a bunch of different people have tried it at least. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what did you know about Allie and, and, the, and the Rubik's Cube thing? And, and you know, how, how has that kind of helped the team, I guess? Well, it, it's, it's, uh, it has grown. And I didn't know that Allie was a Cuber at all. And as, as an 80s kid, you know, I was pretty excited when, when it made its appearance last year. And um, so then both my kids had to try it, my personal <laughs> kids, and they couldn't do it. And I don't have the patience for it. And I can get one side. And, and uh, um, But with all of our bus trips mm -hmm. and all of our hotel time, it's nice to have something else to do. And this year at the, at the airport, when we were waiting to go to Florida, we suddenly had competitions going on between other kids in the airport and our kids. And, and so it's been a source of entertainment for us, to be certain. Has anybody been able to beat you on the team or that you kind of uh, challenged? No, not yet. We've done uh, Cappy, who was on the team. Last year we did, uh, she can do a two by two Rubik's Cube, so it's a little smaller. Mm -hmm. And we've raced with that. And sometimes she can beat me doing a two by two while I do a three by three. So it's not like quite equal, but she's beating me doing that. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, and then uh, the last question about that is, I, I think I saw a candid picture that you either posted yourself or somebody else uh, posted on Twitter of you with the Rubik's Cube in, the, in your pocket. Is it kind of true you never go anywhere without one? Oh yeah, this is the one that I keep in my backpack when I go to school. So <laughs> in case I get bored or something, yeah, I always keep one in my softball bag and my school backpack and then all over my house. <laughs> okay. uh, let's talk a little bit about softball because uh, this year, right now you're leading the team in batting average, 481. Uh, obviously, Laney has been uh, hitting really well too, but your situation is a little bit different because last year you were primarily the designated player, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And now you're catching a little yeah. bit more this year. So how difficult was it to maintain your batting average while you're still having to go out there in the field? Uh, I like it a lot better, to be honest. I found it last year a little difficult. If I got out, I kind of felt like I didn't do my job because mm -hmm. I wasn't playing defense. So this year it's a little easier because I feel like I can go out and contribute on defense instead of just hitting. Okay. And uh, was it just there were players older ahead of her that made you have her the designated player last uh, year? Last year she was battling concussions. Okay. And so as a, she had recovered and was cleared, um, but we had Paige and Riley, and it was just one of those things that I didn't want to be without Al's bat mm -hmm. in the lineup at the time. And I said... Well, she gets one more foul ball. Now we're going to be without her for a chunk of time. We've got two other catchers. Let's just let her be the offensive player. Where now this year it was uh, more necessary to to get her back. And she's such a defensive weapon. Mm -hmm. We missed that last year. Her arm can change a game, and and her ability to block pitches and and handle pitchers is so good. We missed it last year, but we also had enough to go with it um, that it was a way to make sure and ensure the offense was always there. And now this year, and, and, and designated player is a tough spot just because of what Al said. You feel like that's your only role, so you have to get a hit every time. And, and so be able to get people in on the defensive side and give them opportunities is important too. All right, well, thank you guys for uh, joining us here today. And uh, maybe we'll get you back on the show with a different, uh, tougher Rubik's Cube, and, uh, or maybe try to get you to set a record, something like that. <laughs> Sounds good, thank All you. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you for joining us here on Warriors Walk Off. We'll see you next time here on TV25.